All right, what do we have here? We have a diagram representing a bunch of atoms put together, do we not? Sure we do. We know what that's all about. Uh, all these C's represent what? Carbon atoms. All these H's represent hydrogen atoms. We even have an oxygen atom here. So is this a lipid molecule? That actually represents just part of a lipid molecule, a part called a tail. And so we're going to see a lipid molecule has a head with one, two, or three tails attached. So this would represent a tail. And before we see how those are attached together, let's look at something down here. What is that? Well, that's called a double bond. That's a double bond between the carbon uh, atom and the oxygen atom, and as opposed to all these bonds that are single bonds. And so every carbon atom is supposed to form how many bonds with neighboring atoms? Four. So how many bonds does this carbon atom have with neighboring atoms? One, two, three, four. So it's got all four. So there you have it. Well, now let's look at this diagram. It shows three tails that are called fatty acid attached to a head called glycerol. I'm not going to ask you that, but I could ask you about the fatty acids. What is the head? Well, it's a bunch of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms joined together. And so here we have the tails. We can use this diagram to... <coughs> think about the question, uh, what elements are lipids made of? And we can see the same three as carbohydrates, do we not? Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. But is the ratio the same as in carbohydrates? What was the ratio of atoms in carbohydrates of CH and O? It was 1 to 2 to 1. Is that what we have here? I don't think so. Although the C to H is pretty close to 1 to 2, is it not? There's a one carbon atom attached to it, or two hydrogens, and we got an awful lot of that. So it's, uh, <clears throat> as far as the carbon and hydrogen goes, it's, you know, it's kind of like 1 to 2. But the oxygen, much less, much less, much less. And so those oxygen atoms down there, they're kind of lonesome. Uh, <clears throat> so the ratio of atoms of the elements in a... Uh, lipid, 1 to 2, and very little. 1 to 2, as far as carbon, hydrogen, very little oxygen compared to C and H. Now, what makes a lipid saturated or unsaturated? It has totally to do with the tails. And the tails of a saturated lipid are different than the tails of an unsaturated. Let's take a look and see how by looking at this picture. Say, Professor, that's the one we just looked at. Well, it's a little different. We've got a little more information. It says no double bonds. Say, what about this one down here? Well, this means no double bonds between carbon atoms. And so in a saturated lipid, there are only single bonds between carbon atoms, no double bonds. And so, um, and so that is the way it is with a saturated lipid. And so let's uh, take a look at how it is with an unsaturated one. In an unsaturated one, there is at least one double bond someplace. In at least one of the tails, there is one double bond. And so there it is here in this diagram. And, uh, and so we have, instead of two hydrogen atoms being attached to the carbon, only one hydrogen atom is attached because of this double bond. This carbon has three, uh, four, uh, four um, bonds of neighboring atoms. Here's two, and here's two more. And so, one, two, three, four um, bonds for this carbon atom. Uh, no place to add another hydrogen at this point. Another effect besides um, uh, this double bond, another effect of this double bond besides how many hydrogen atoms can be added is represented by this kink. There's the word kink. And so the double bond puts a kink in the tail of the, uh, in the tail of the lipid. And so uh, we, see, uh, we see a kink here, a crooked tail. And so the tails of saturated lipids are straight. The tails, at least one tail of an unsaturated lipid, one fatty acid, has a double bond making that tail crooked. He's saying, what difference does that make? Well, we will see very shortly.